happy monday happy monday happy monday everybody this is kiera and i am bringing you on my podcast for this monday um i am back i am ready i am rejuvenated i'm ready to go and i'm so excited about just talking to you about what's been going on in my life and hopefully you guys um are on this journey with me hopefully you guys are as excited as i am um for those of you that do not know i am now 23 weeks pregnant i am excitedly ready to bring our son into this world and my second son i have one son he will be three in september and now i'm bringing another one in in october and i'm just super excited about everything that god is doing so I guess the question that everybody wants to know is, where have I been? Where have you been? Um, I have been um, at home. I've been doing my due diligence with, in terms of church, in terms of taking care of my family and my home. I'm taking care of myself, really paying attention to myself, seeing what I need mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. So I found out that my husband and I were expecting another child in February of this year. Um, I found out because I was at, okay, so at the end of last year almost, um, I visited a church and one of my friends were um, pregnant and she told me that she was pregnant she told me that you know something was just different to her and that she was pregnant and the baby was fine i was like okay thank you jesus because this is one of my sisters that i had gone through loss um with at the same time last year and so i was just super happy for her and immediately something began to leap in my belly and so i'm like lord i know i'm not pregnant right now what is happening to me and the interesting thing is when i was pregnant with our first son Bernard Titus um we went to visit our friends in Alabama for a conference and while we were eating together I was sitting next to um, my husband friend's uh, wife my friend and um her she was pregnant and as soon as I sat next to her and she was talking to me my womb began to leap like my stomach began to leap as if there was like a baby or something in there kicking and stuff and so the first time it like creeped me out the second time I really could identify what that was and it takes me back to Luke chapter one or in the book of Matthew as well when Elizabeth and Mary came together and John began leaping uh, because um Elizabeth's belly and presence was close to Mary and Jesus and so um that really was just the confirmation that God was going to fulfill the promise that he made to me in his timing. And so I tried not to rush it. At first, I did start rushing it, if I can be honest. I started to do things like um, I started to like get ovulation kits and things like that or um, do it by my phone. I mostly did it by my phone, just following my ovulation and when I was the most fertile and just trying to do it. And that just wasn't working for me because it became very stressful. And I started back where I was in the beginning of our marriage when I when we were like, oh yeah, let's have a baby. You know, if the Lord says so, let's try. And it wasn't working and it was making me frustrated and it was taking me back to a mental place of dysfunction where I just came out of after our loss last year in July. So I stopped. I stopped paying attention to it. I stopped making it my focus. And I started focusing on other things. I started focusing on charity movement. I started focusing on my family. I started focusing on my body. So I started working out regularly, getting on the schedule, food schedule, things like that. Really taking power and strength over my health and fitness. So um, I am in the gym in February, working out my, my last couple reps with my trainer and I run to the bathroom as fast as I can because I start throwing up. So immediately I think to myself, it's probably because I ate something bad. Maybe I ate something, like I ate too much before I got to the gym and now it's starting to come back up. So maybe that's what it was. But it wasn't because at that time I was on a strict diet and it just didn't make sense. I went once, I came back, started working on my reps again, went back in there and I threw up again so I probably did this about four times before my trainer was like okay 
go home Kira and I was like okay well I'll be back later like just you know I'll be back tomorrow or day after tomorrow something like that so I got in the car and I needed a bag really fast and I threw up there I drove to McDonald's to get an ice um an ice water and a Verner's and I threw up there and then the Lord told me when I was because I was going to pick up our son from um his god siblings and he was spending some time over there while i went to the gym the lord said to stop at the nearest walgreens or was it a rite aid i don't know if it was a rite aid or a walgreens okay i'm sorry but the lord told me to turn into that store and to get a pregnancy test and i said if you want me to be honest i said no lord because these pregnancy tests are expensive okay the good ones are expensive they are expensive expensive and I didn't want to waste my money because the reality is I didn't want to feel that rejection and that denial again because it felt like I was being denied and I did not want to go through that level of turmoil and having to internally deal with those emotions and categorize them and grow past them and get through them and all of that I just didn't want that experience again and so I just told the Lord previously that I wanted to be surprised like I didn't want to be at the beginning i kind of just wanted to be surprised okay and so here i am i am going into the store i get the pregnancy test and i go to pick titus up I pick titus up i go home and as soon as i go home i put titus in his chair to eat dinner because i made dinner and then i went into the bathroom and i took the test i always take two or three because i'm excuse me i want to be sure and I don't want a false positive. So I want it to be super careful and super short. So lo and behold, I take the two and I am positive. I said, I call my sister. That was the first person I called. And I just burst out in tears because I could not believe that I was really surprised. I was really genuinely very surprised because I was not expecting to be pregnant then. And then I called my husband and no, I waited until my husband got home and we talked about it and I told him, and for a while um part of this process was hard because um at first i had to learn that everybody handles grief differently and everybody deals with recovery at their own pace because for me i was at a place where i needed that reassurance from my husband that everything was going to be okay because of what happened previously for my husband, it was, I don't want to get too excited because I don't want to see her broken down again. So it was as if my husband was trying to be strong for me because we didn't know what was going to happen, but we just wanted to be prepared for everything. And he really wanted to be prepared for me. He wanted to carry me. He wanted to make sure I was emotionally intact. He wanted to make sure I was mentally fortified and he just wanted to be that rock for me. And I just couldn't understand it because I'm like, I don't want you to be my rock. I just want you to tell me how you feel about this. Like, if you're happy, if you're happy about it, it'll make me that much more happy. And once we talked about it and we communicated, that's why it's so important to communicate with your spouse. Because once I communicated that, he communicated his thoughts. I then looked at it in a different way because I, at first I assumed that he wasn't really happy because he didn't react the way I see, you know, fathers that do on social media. And that's another thing. You can't expect your spouse to be anybody else other than themselves. They will not react like others. They will not be like the status quo, especially if you marry someone like my husband, you're just not gonna get that. So just get it out your head. But that really taught me something about how people deal with pain, how people deal with grief and how people deal with recovery especially when they're married and especially when he's the man and he feels like he is the head well he is the head but he feels like he has to carry everybody and so I, I just had to reassure him that he could be vulnerable with me in that area and that he didn't have to carry me in that instance even though he felt like he had he, he had to so um in about April I started really um, I was sick the entire time. I still have on and off spats of nausea and dizziness and things like that. But I was really serious about keeping my mental, emotional, and spiritual health intact. So I made sure to see a counselor. I made sure to invest 
in those things because I really did not want this experience to be one where I detach myself from the experiences every day of being pregnant. And at first I could clearly see that there was telltale signs that I was doing that. Like I was neglecting um, that early on bond with the baby all because I didn't want to invest time that I felt like was going to be wasted. And that was because I hadn't fully dealt with the loss from last year. Like I couldn't admit that it hurt me still. I couldn't admit that it was that deep for me because last time by the time that we knew about the baby it was as if it was always already being stolen from us and we never got like a full ultrasound we never got all of these experiences and it hurt me even more um, because without my mind and without my memory it's as if there's no evidence that this happened and I think that's what the hardest part for me was so then I knew that I had to step aside and step back beyond all of my goals and my dreams and what I was heading for this year, I really just had to stop and say to myself, you know, what profited the man to to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I don't want to get so caught up in my goals and, you know, what I'm doing right now, what I want to do and doing all these things that I lose. Number one, I lose the joy and the memories that I have right now. Number two, I busy myself so much that I put my health in jeopardy. And number three, I fool around and get to a place of mental degradation that I lose my soul. And I don't want to do any of those things. So I took some time away to just build my mind up to prepare for all the things that pregnancy has to offer. You know, yes, I have been pregnant before, but this is a totally different pregnancy. This is different than anything I've ever experienced before with being pregnant. And it's a beautiful thing because it shows that every child is different. Every genetic makeup is different in terms of how your baby is going to be, your per- his personality, everything. And so I really just wanted to take time for that. Um, I really, really am grateful for my support system that was there for me the entire time that prayed with me, that stood by my side, um, that went to bat for me in the spirit when it came down to me mentally preparing myself for the seriousness of carrying a child. And um, I had to learn to believe in a different way. This time of, I'll say a little bit of isolation, this time of isolation from you know, portraying who I am to other people, it was refreshing to me because I really had the personal time to sift through what I felt while being pregnant. Like if I felt detached, I had enough time in my day to categorize why I felt that way and how do I change this and what can I do practical things and spiritual things to change how I'm feeling right now so all of those things were necessary for me to get to where I am right now and to take me to where I'm going um if you do hear the congestion right now it is because I have a toddler who is at home who is getting over a sinus infection and he is giving me almost every symptom because he's been so clingy to me. (laughs) He never leaves my side except for when he goes to sleep. And it is like, oh my gosh, but it's a beautiful thing, so beautiful. But um, yes, I have all of his symptoms, but he can take medicine and I really can't other than like a Zyrtec or a Claritin. But that's another point. It's like, I really have to learn what it means to be pregnant all over again. Even in the way I talk, even in the way that I sing, I basically have to learn what that means over again because (sighs) the baby takes everything. It takes all your extra breath. It takes over all of your organs. It takes over everything from you and leaves you tired. Okay, but you're blessed. You're blessed anyhow. But all in all, this has been a great journey for me. This has been a blessing for me. Um, These 23 weeks have been amazing. I asked the Lord to um, let me be surprised this time. And I was definitely surprised. My husband was as well. Um, I'm surprised every day about how this baby is. And the baby's personality already. And just anticipating how um, Bernard, Titus, and our baby now is going to interact with one another. And just the type of big brother that my... Um, toddler is going to be to our our infant. I'm so excited. 
I know that our son loves babies and he loves to cater to other people. So I know that he's going to be a great big sibling. Um, I hope this kind of wraps up where I've been, what I've been doing, what I've been thinking about. And I really want to stay consistent for the rest of the time. Maybe I'll do a weekly like update on what I've been doing and maybe take a picture of whatnot. But I just want to um, encourage those people who are waiting to be parents, waiting to, you know, be pregnant, waiting to um, for God to open up their womb. I just want to encourage you that God will do it for you when you confess and declare his word back to him there's a different level of confidence that is established in a believer to know that the things that are written before time that are written for our learning that through patience and the scriptures we can have hope when you have this you have everything that you need to get everything that you need from the lord if you need financial stability it's in the word of god if you need a saved man of God, it's in his word. And if you need a child into for God to establish a family for you, it is in the word of God. And that's one of the things that I really had to concentrate on um, is making flashcards to really concentrating on what God says about me and this body for me to carry. Okay. Um, it has been such a learning experience for me all over again. I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm I'm like a new mom all over again. I am, but it just feels so new. It feel, everything feels new for me. And so I'm really excited about it. I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful to God for um, his abundant mercy and grace toward me. So all in all, that's it. That's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. Um, I hope you got something um, encouraging out of it. I hope that um, you listen. I hope that you like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Charity Movement. I hope that you share it with someone else who may be struggling or who may be pregnant as well that just needs some information. I hope that God blesses you and keeps you and he causes his face to shine upon you. And I want to remind you that the only one stopping you is you. See you soon.